Hi, it's Lou Brown. I'm back with another of my 101 cash flow accelerators. In this segment, we've been talking about managing property. And if you're like me, you want to have less headaches and more income. And one of the things that I discovered years ago is when I give my residents an opportunity to be in a position to own the property, I'm going to get a better resident, better mindset, better incentive to pay us on time, more likely to take better care of the property. So years ago, I started doing something called an option, a lease with the option to purchase the property. Now, way back in the day, they used to do six month leases. Home builders would do that with an option to buy to get people into the next season, maybe get over a bump in their credit and then give them the chance to buy the brand new home. We extended that into our rental property business. We used to give a one year lease. Now we are one year option. Now we give a three year option, giving people plenty of time to be able to get themselves coordinated with their credit, also to earn credits every month towards the purchase of the home that every month that they pay the rent on time. It's been fantastic. We expanded it from one year to three years so that people would have plenty of time to get their act together, earn their credit, and not lose their money. We also credit our residents with the amount of money that they give us as their option fee at the end when they do exercise their option we do give them credit for that it's an awesome way to get a better resident who's more inclined to pay you and more incentivized we have a program called the path to home ownership we help deserving families regardless of credit or financial background to end up with home ownership to learn more about that and to become certified You'd go to certifiedaffordablehousingprovider.com. One of the things we started doing in the last video, I was talking about giving our residents the option to purchase and how that can be so much better for you. You can end up with a better resident. Now, one point I want to make about that is we have them pay what's called NROC, non-refundable option consideration. What that means is, is that once they pay that money, and I want you to understand this, they have purchased merchandise. The merchandise they purchased is the option to purchase that property. So as a result of purchasing that option, they have paid for that. Well, when they pay for that, that's non-refundable. Now, as a bonus, as an incentive to our residents, what we will do is we tell them, when you exercise your option to buy, we're going to give you X dollars towards consideration at the time of your purchase of the property. In other words, we're going to give them a credit. Now, that credit can either be an amount that's equal to what they paid you originally for the option, or it could be some other number. Now, my paperwork allows for that. That's in Lease Options, Volume 9 streetsmartinvestor.com click on tools open that up volume nine is lease with the option to buy one of the things to say about that is that we can both buy a property with lease with option to buy and we can sell a property with lease with option to buy now we do have different paperwork for each side of that transaction so always know that we've got the system separated into two parts, buying versus selling. And to give you some documentation, some protections, some negotiation that can benefit you. One of the things that is very important in having a successful real estate business is paperwork management. Sorry guys, this is a detail oriented business the paperwork does matter finding the paperwork absolutely matters and it's important that you always can put your finger on it one of the things i developed over time you know if you think about it once you get into a real estate transaction it can be quite thick over time and you've got to have different segments uh, to be able to find things quickly and easily so i found these six part folders 
that uh, pretty much just show you what you can do with each one of these segments. So if you look at, I've got one section, and if you start with this section over here, uh, that's the first section. This is my buying section. This is where I put the contract, all the purchase documents, everything related to the initial purchase is here. The second section, I do teach trusts, land trusts and personal property trusts. And so we have the trust documents in this next section. The third section is the property taxes and insurance section. So anything related to that would be uh, pinned into this section. The fourth section, is the asset itself the details about the asset itself uh, and you know in any information about that property uh, it layouts for the property surveys appraisals anything related to the property and the final section is selling once we sell the property the purchase and sale agreement everything related to it well so over time i discovered what we needed in each one of these sections so I created a system called business management, where we actually give you a cover sheet for each one of these sections. And each section has its own divider, its own relative information in there. And with the list that's in that section, you simply check off what's related to that. Now that we have that for you on a forms disk, I'm gonna see if I've got business management right here. And sure enough, there it is. And this this was this is a work of art let me tell you it took me two years to write this uh, business management baby and this is where we have been able to put together how to lay out your office how to lay out your files your file folders your step-by-step -step processes your procedures setting up your business right means you will have paperwork sanity and in a business with a lot of paperwork going on that's very important now, the second thing that we have is a resident file. So each one of our residents, uh, there's a file assigned to them. So if you say, well, this is the asset file that has the six sections in it, this is the resident file. Now in the resident file, on one side, I would have all the information about that particular resident on one side, and on the other side, I would have their rental agreement uh, and everything that is relative to the current uh, relationship that we have with them. So at any time a resident might move out, well, at least we've got a full file on that particular resident. Their name doesn't change, but who lives in the property does change. So that's why we separate these two out, even have two separate file cabinets for the asset versus the residents. Now we're gonna talk about lease with the option to buy, get a better resident and increase your cash flow. Now, how in the world can you increase your cash flow? Well, number one, when they move in, they're gonna pay you a non-refundable option consideration. In our world, that's generally no less than 3.7% of the value of the property, all the way up to 10%. When we get to the 10% level, then we're gonna to go to a different program called owner financing. I'll teach that to you in a different segment. But what's valuable here is instead of a traditional landlord tenant relationship, typically landlord only gets a security deposit, which they can't spend and they get the first month's rent. Well, in our world, we're not only getting the first month's rent from the resident, we're also getting a purchase from them they're purchasing the option to purchase the property that's a significant cash flow accelerator because it's a hunk of money think about a hundred thousand dollar property now instead of getting say a thousand dollar security deposit that you can't spend you're getting thirty seven hundred five thousand seven thousand dollars that you can spend why because they're purchasing the option to buy that property. Now I give them up to three years to purchase that property. So their money is well spent because I'm gonna give them one year of that option at a fixed amount. And then it's gonna increase typically a half percent per calendar month until they exercise their option to buy. 
So it's a really great cash flow incentive, cash flow accelerator. Get a better resident, different mindset. It's always valuable to have somebody that's got some skin in the game, baby. And also, if they were to move out in the middle of the night, if they were to leave any damages, remember you got a significant sum of money at the beginning that helps you over that hump. In this segment, we've been talking about proper property management, informed property management, profitable property management. And one of the great profit centers that you have is giving your resident the opportunity to someday own that home. Now, in the marketing that we do, we market to find people that have a significant down payment that they could put down on the property. Why would they give it to you? Because they can't typically qualify for a traditional loan at the bank. Well, aren't you a great service provider in your community? We call you an affordable housing provider and actually under a program, you can become a certified affordable housing provider and be provided all the documents, the training, the tools, the marketing, the websites, a complete package to open a business in your local community that attracts those kind of folks. And one of the great cash flow accelerators is that there's people out there that have significant down payment. And I'm not talking about the security deposit like you would get if you were just doing landlording. Oh, I'm talking about a significant down payment when someone purchases a property. We get no less than 10% if we're gonna own or finance that property. And in some cases we get 20 and 30 and even 50% down from the resident because they have saved up a significant sum of money. But even with that amount of money, the bank doesn't love them. Well, let me tell you something, folks. If somebody's got 10% or more to put down, I love them. And I want to support them and help them and their family end up with home ownership. We have a program. It's called the Path to Home Ownership. And in fact, uh, this is my book on Amazon.com. It says, Never Pay Rent Again, The Path to Home Ownership. And this is to give our families the opportunity to someday own a home. And we love that process. We give you the tools, the training, the technology, and the team to be able to do that. I am a certified affordable housing provider. You become one as well once you are trained. Just to learn more about that, go to certifiedaffordablehousingprovider.com and check out some of the different galleries that are there. And you can see what our caps are up to, cap for certified affordable housing provider where you can separate yourself from being just a landlord into housing provider, an affordable housing provider, in fact, a certified affordable housing provider. One of the things that I teach you to do in this particular segment is to separate your documentation. So in other words, we're entering into two different agreements if we're going to do a lease with the option to buy You've got a lease, you've got what we call our standard rental agreement, and that covers the relationship that we have with them as an occupant of the property. Separately, they're going to purchase another thing called an option to buy, and, and that option to purchase is going to give them the right to purchase that property within a designated period of time with a certain requirements within that. And as a result of them agreeing to that separate agreement, they now have that option to purchase the property. Well, what my advice for you is to stay out of trouble with the courts. If you combine your rental agreement with your option agreement in the same document, it can create problems for you. The judge can look at that option fee that you collected, which is typically non-refundable, and that's what we want to collect, right? Non-refundable option consideration means that we can actually spend the money now. We don't have to escrow it. We don't have to wait until later. And if you choose to give some or all of that amount as a credit towards their purchase of the home, that's fine. That's going to be designated in the paperwork, but you can go ahead and spend the money right now. And 
there is so many benefits to doing that. Of course, that's a major cash flow accelerator. And the important thing is documentation that your standard rental agreement is separate from your option agreement because there are two different agreements that are happening simultaneously. And so you want to get the benefit of both of those and not have the judge look at your option consideration as security deposit. So over in the standard rental agreement, we've got that segmented out. And in fact, uh, we teach you that there's actually another way you can handle your down payment in relation to the option agreement. So those are two different documents, two different agreements that you're making with the resident. That will keep you out of trouble, baby. That's a brilliant thing. In this segment, we're going to be talking about renovations. I've made a fortune in renovations. It's been absolutely incredible. I learned a lot about what to do and what not to do. I didn't know anything. I didn't have any background in rehabbing anything, having been raised by a single mom, being raised in apartments, having no dad, having no background in construction not taking any classes or going anywhere to learn about those things. I learned about it through hard knocks and I've got all kinds of advice for you on this. But uh, one thing is that if, when you do hire someone to do your work, you always start with a good contract. Now, uh, what I recommend you do is actually go through and make the list of everything that needs to be done in the home. And that means identify everything that you want done. Don't let them tell you, you tell them so that when you are getting bids from contractors, it's apples to apples to apples. And then attached to that bid should also be the rules of engagement. <laughs> and what I'm letting the contractor know in advance is how we're going to work together and about advances, about payments, about how they're going to get paid and who's responsible for the permits and everything related to that project and how many people they have to have on the project, how many days per week. You see, what happens often is that a contractor will go ahead and get your job and then they'll get someone else's job and someone else's job and someone else's job too. And then they'll juggle between the various jobs and you don't get your job attended to and with the right connection and responsibility because you didn't do the right contract. So what I recommend and what we have in my volume 11 renovations is an independent contractor services agreement. And in this independent contractor services agreement, we spell out all of the different things that are related to our agreement, when they're going to get paid, how they're going to get paid, and over what period of time. So then that contract specifically states the length of time that the project is, and it also states that should it go beyond that date, there's actually a penalty, a daily penalty, to incentivize them to get that job done and done on time. And I've had contractors literally work overnight, work their entire crew overnight to get that job done on time before the penalty kicks in. By the same token, once you look at the contract and look at the length of time that it's going to take, we make that an incentive as well. So every day that they end the contract earlier than the target date, they actually earn a bonus because in this business, time is money. The sooner you can get to market with your project, the sooner you can get your exposure for that property, the better off you're going to be. I've got bunches of different uh, ideas for you on doing contracting, doing renovating the right way, and making sure that you're in a position to win. You'll learn more. Go to streetsmartinvestor.com Click on tools, open up renovations. You'll get a lot of information about what we teach you in the renovation system. It's very important. You can make a fortune in renovations. I've had as many as 26 renovations going at one time in one neighborhood. So it's a way that you can accelerate your cash flow for sure. 
but you got to have the right contract. And I wanted you to know that it's so important when you are in the area of renovating property that you always get references uh, on the contractors that you're going to do business with. Now, let me uh, warn you and alert you that references sometimes are setups as well. Do you think that the contractor is going to give you people that are going to give them a bad reference? No, they're going to give you people that are going to give them a good reference, like their mama, their brother-in-law, other people in their life. So what you're looking for is references that are recent references that they had work done, say, within the last few months. And you, you definitely want to interview those folks. You want to find out what's going on in their world. You know, did the contractor live up to the budget that you entered into? Did they chisel you for more money along the way? Did they adjust the time frame? Did they get the job done and did they clean up their debris? Did they do it in a professional manner? Did they leave the site clean every day? And obviously the references you want to get are more relative to the size of project that you're doing. If you're about to do a $20,000 renovation and they're giving you a reference on a project that cost $1,000, well, that's hardly comparable. One of the things that can help you a lot is to save money when you are doing renovations. And one of the things that you have to get clear in your contract with your contractor, and I, I jokingly say contractor, it's built right into their name, right? Is that it get, you get very clear in the beginning who's going to do what, under what circumstances, and what time frame. And one of the things you always want to get clarity on is the, the concept of having to get permits from the county. Is it you that's going to get the permit and they're going to work under your permit or are they going to get the permit? Well, I always recommend that you have the contractor get the permit. They're putting their license on the line. They're putting themselves at risk when they don't do what they're supposed to do. We always want to get the sign off from the county before you proceed uh, with paying them. We're talking in this segment about renovations. I've made a fortune in the arena of renovations and I want to help you to do the same. And I've learned an awful lot about how important the contract is. Listen, your contractor, many times these folks are in desperation most of the time. And uh, they're always angling for ways to get their money out of you before the work is done. I find it best to not be the owner, be the manager. So the hat that you should wear is that of a project manager. And then you have the authority to release payments based on the contract when the actual sign off occurs from the county. When they have the inspection done, by the county, they're the ones that need to organize that and set that up and be present for the inspection. When the sign off on the permit occurs, that's when you pay. And if you have any suspicion at all, whether that's a legitimate sign off or not, believe me, contractors, there's a reason that con is in the word contractor, is it, I've seen it, I've lived it, where they actually signed off on the permit themselves. And let's face it, someone who has nothing to lose has nothing to lose by doing something like that. So if you have any suspicion at all, you call the county, you call the inspector and confirm that they actually did sign off. Alternatively, be present for the inspection. Know that the permit was not signed because there were certain things that were done incorrectly or that the inspector required to be done before they would sign off on it. And remember, you don't pay the money until the sign off occurs. We're talking about renovations in this segment. And one of the things that's always very, very important is do your homework in advance of bringing in any contractors, go through the property yourself, make a list of the items that need to be done room by room and trade by trade. Now, trade by trade, 
So one of the things that I've created in my system called renovations is I separated what's called scope of work by trade. So you should have a separate scope of work for plumbing, heating and air conditioning, electrical, roofing, carpentry general, and painting. So those six different trades, typically done by different people, you're giving them a different list of things to do. Now, what I did is break it down room by room so that you're actually walking through the room, walking through the project, determining by tip-offs that I have on each one of the different rooms of things to look at. And then when you mark those things down, you be as specific as possible. I remember this one time on the scope of work for Carpentry General, I had this contractor and he decided he was gonna put up three and a half inch crown molding in the living room. And I had right on the scope of work, five and a quarter inch crown molding. And you know he called me for the inspection so that I would pay him. And I looked, immediately walked in and I went, okay, this does not impress me. And he says, what's wrong? And I said, a crown molding. And he said, yeah, I put it up. I said, I know you put up three and a half inch and this is supposed to be five and a quarter inch. And he says, well, that's too bad for you. This is what I put up. I said, no, hold on. Let's take a look at the contract. And sure enough, right there on the contract, it said five and a quarter inch crown molding. Well, he had to rip out all that crown molding, install new crown molding on his own ticket before I would pay. It's so important that you get these things nailed down per trade, per room. I've got that all broken down for you in my renovation system, volume 11, renovations. You can go to streetsmartinvestor.com and look, click on tools and then click on renovations. It'll give you all the information. This one, I want you to be aware of what your costs are when you're doing renovations. I know that sounds simple and duh, but it's really not. And a lot of people really don't understand what they're going to spend when they go into a project. Often, actually as an investor, I buy from wholesalers all the time. And one of the things is they bring me projects that are failed projects. Why? Because the unknowing, untrained investor came in, purchased the property, started the renovation, ran out of money, got taken advantage of by the contractor, didn't know what to do, didn't know how to do it, crashed and burned, brings me the deal, I buy it for pennies on the dollar, I'm able to finish the renovation. It's something you need to be very aware of, particularly if you're just getting started in the business. It's critical that you know your costs. Literally go room by room. Now in my system called renovations, I actually take you step by step and room by room in the budgeting process. And so you're identifying the items in that room. Now, what I've done is already given you a tip off for each one of the things that I want you to look at when you're at that project. And so what happens is now you are triggered to actually identify that particular thing. For example, in the kitchen, obviously cabinets then countertops, and then the sink, and then the faucet. You see each one of these is a separate budget item and can be highly skewed on the costs by your choices of finishes, by your choices of quality of cabinet, your choice of the sink, your choice of the faucet. You see each one of these items can vary widely as I was saying. So it's important that you identify these things by taking that list of budget items, you identify what you're going to have in your project. Now you can go online to homedepot.com or you can go to other suppliers and you can literally identify the items that you want selected for your property and put those item numbers. In fact, you can build a list right there online, build a list of all the items that you want and they'll add them up. Now we are certified affordable housing providers. We have special discounts with various suppliers uh, under our brand. So that's another thing once you become certified that you get the benefit of like automatic 20% off paint, automatic discounts on cabinets, 
automatic discount on carpet, automatic discounts on packages of appliances. These are things that we've been able to pre-negotiate for you for our certified affordable housing providers. One of the things that's very, very important that you identify when you don't understand what it is that you're doing. For example, you may think to yourself that you are supposed to do something. And I've seen too many times when people buy carpet when they need to be buying drywall and they bring things to the project that's untimely for where the step is in the project. So critical that you have deliveries related to the installation of those things. Reason is that contractors and their workers are often very sloppy, careless. It's your materials. They don't care about those things. And secondly, theft. That it's easy to take something that's right there on the job hate to tell you this, but some of the people working on the job might be the thieves, or they might tell someone else, hey, I know some stuff that's on that job over there. It could be taken back to the supplier and it could be refunded. You see, you wanna always be careful, or it could be sold to some other renovator for a discount. By the way, don't ever be a market for that stuff. You know, when people bring me stuff, at a huge discount, I go, oh no, I know this was stolen from somewhere. I'm not gonna hurt somebody else by buying this at a discount. And just do the right thing. Karma is a, is a real thing. And you do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And so it's important that when you identify an arena that you do not understand, get professional help, hire, a home inspector to come into that property, identify the things that absolutely need to be fixed because that's going to come up sooner or later. Your buyer of the property may have a home inspector come in and now you're going to have to fix things that could have been fixed during the renovation that now you've got to tear out walls, tear out floors. You see, I've seen it all. I've been in this game for over 40 years, buying, holding, and selling property. And I can tell you, you got to do your homework. You got to do this right. Don't make the mistakes that so many others have made and crash and burn along the way. Some of the things in renovations seem like it's just the, it's common sense. And, and a lot of it is common sense. Renovate the property for the buyer that you want. Now, I've done many, many renovations and it's been really exciting to watch how this has evolved in my life. I used to fix up the properties the way I liked it and would sell them. It was great. But what I realized is I needed to start marketing the property right away so that I could find a buyer right away. And then they would be able to select the paint colors, the carpeting or flooring, they could choose the cabinets, the countertops, the sinks, the faucets. So what I did is start with a budget. And then if they wanted something different, they could pay for that. Well, it was wonderful. And also I was able to collect a non-refundable earnest money during the renovation. It's a great way to do your business. Make sure you have a customer before you do the renovation. Planning for you to make more money with less effort this is a great one and it is always have a budget. You know, a lot of people jump into a renovation. They really don't know what they're going to do or how they're going to do it. They just decide along the way, which is a really bad plan. So my advice is to do your homework, design the house the way with the end in mind, always know what materials you're going to put into it and how much you're going to spend. Otherwise you can spiral out of control. I've watched many people crash and burn. You know, they watch TV. They think that they are now in the renovation business. It looks so easy. It's amazing how they're able to do all of those months of renovations in just a half an hour, isn't it? And, and many times you can see the pain and suffering that people go through in their renovations, way overspend, tear out things they shouldn't have torn out, and really not taking advantage of the, uh, the fact that you need to be making a profit. And one of the things you got to deal with 
who can help you make a lot of money is your contractor. <laughs> I make jokes about the word con being in contractor because you definitely have to be on your toes. You have to know that the deal can change at any moment in time. And if you're not alert to it, they can actually get over on you. Always have a contract when you're dealing with contractors. Always know exactly what the deal is, who's going to be responsible for what. And if you don't, I promise you, you're going to have some pain, suffering, and expenses you could have avoided. Now, I've got an independent contractor services agreement. It took me years to work through that and come up with a plan that absolutely works. It's in my volume 11 renovations. You can find that at streetsmartinvestor.com. Under tools, click on renovations, volume 11. You can learn more about that. Hopefully this has been helpful. Like it, love it, share it, and I'll see you soon. Yeah, baby.